What if I told you you can get unlimited leads for free by leveraging one of the most powerful AI and automation workflow tools currently on the market? I'm gonna show you how you can use N8N to scrape unlimited leads completely on autopilot, and then I'll show you how you can actually turn them into paying customers or clients. The best part is you don't even need to know how to code to do this. It's super, super simple. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to do this for yourself and generate as many leads as you want in N8N. So first off, what is N8N? Basically, N8N is a workflow automation tool to which you can do literally whatever you want. I mean, everything comes down to penciling it out, writing it down on a napkin, literally just making sure you can actually do the steps and move data where you want to. There's always things about triggers and actions. And if you really think about it, your entire day is pretty much a workflow. I mean, you get up, you go to work, you make your coffee. This is a sequence of events that you probably do every single day, all the way until you shut down and then repeat again. N8N is no different. It's just basically automated repetitive tasks to where you can do with virtually whatever you want to move things in different triggers and actions in order to get the job done. If you go through the different products here that they have in use cases, they have so many integrations and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. There's literally no integration that you can't connect to, including the HTTP API, which is unlimited, basically keys to the internet. One other thing that you're going to notice here in the upper right is GitHub. That means that it's open source and you can literally clone the repo to your computer or you can store it on a digital ocean docker container or you can also store it on aws you can store it wherever you want and you have completely unlimited workflows for free so that is one beautiful thing about n8n from here you'll notice a number of different use cases we have different departments across all verticals in order to make sure that there's a number of different things that you can do which is what we do in our business in terms of streamlining operations and from here you'll notice the integrations the integrations are literally limitless especially with the new integrations that are coming out in the community nodes. One other thing that gives you keys to the internet is this node right here, which is the HTTP request. And in a previous video, I talk about the API v2 on how you can literally leverage every single API endpoint of the instantly v2 API through this node right here. From here, you'll notice community. You also notice templates, which I'm going to show you here in a moment in order to leverage existing workflows, which you can take and implement right into your N8N instance and take it from there. Very simply, this is actually a self-hosted N8N instance. And and I'll simply just do a number of different experimental things to test things out before I actually put it into production. You'll notice it's completely free. There's also a beautiful dashboard here so you can quantify how much time that you're actually saving. There's just a number of different workflows here. So if we so much as create a workflow and if we add a step here, which you'll see what triggers this workflow. So as I mentioned before, we have a number of different triggers that you can do. We're just gonna go ahead and select trigger manually. And if you hit plus, you'll notice there is something that just says what happens next. Well, you can do a number of different things in terms of AI, such as AI agent, and we can very simply build our own AI agent right here. And if we connect this, this basically is a trigger to connect our AI agent in order to do whatever we virtually want to. What we're going to do here is actually use a template that was already generated by Akram, and he made a awesome Google Maps scraper where it's 100% free. If you look into the template here, you can actually click around and move different things here. Click on the canvas. And you will see within the triggers area here that uh, we have Hollywood dentist, downtown dentist. So all the default things here in terms of what it's searching for is no different than what you would actually search for on Google Maps. All you have to do is just click use for free. And you notice you can import this into your own instance by either directly or you can copy it to clipboard, which will import the JSON file. All you have to do is just command V in order to uh, paste that. So you'll notice this workflow is already complete with a template, which is really nice here. And there are notes to show exactly how this thing works. Essentially, we have a Google Maps automatic scraper, which tells you exactly what it does. There's notes on how to work it, including a video tutorial. You also notice that you can set up a list of queries, which all you need to do is to go ahead and click on this and simply click on the pencil icon. And you'll see that this is called JSON, where there's a number of different queries, which includes the city and then what we're actually going to search for on Google Maps. So that said, all you need to do is to simply click on it. You open it. We're going to copy this and then we're going to go over to good old chat GPT. So I went ahead and had that done and then it output exactly what it is. And this is a code snippet. So all you need to do is hit copy 
and then simply paste it right into the node here and then you're officially ready to start. So all we have to do is click execute workflow and you can see that it's working right now and going through all the motions here. It's doing it three times, four times and you can essentially think of this like an engine. It's a flywheel that's just running on loops and each and every single one of them in order to ensure that it passes through. Now what this node does is it actually executes this entire workflow here and it's essentially running this on loop until it runs from top to bottom on all the JSON queries for the search criteria that you populated. We could almost do this entirely from here where we trigger the whole thing, but then you would see this huge loop with a wait node. So this just makes it a little bit cleaner and easier to execute from there. You will see that we went ahead and did the executions. And if we go to our spreadsheet here, you could see I've generated just tons of email addresses all for free. So from here, we have all the data of who we can just reach out to. I'm actually going to take this a little bit further which I've demonstrated here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the same thing we're gonna do the same search we're gonna let it loop over items which is gonna do the same thing that I mentioned and we are going to make this a little bit more robust so you can see when I ran through things here if I so much as you know start it and then it is gonna loop over items which it does the same thing the only things that I've really added to it is an AI agent but also I added relevant data to the URL we are going to actually filter out irrelevant emails because we don't want the example or domain.com because we all know those are terrible and won't deliver. And I've also added what you call a regex to eliminate all the personal emails because if we're scraping gmail.com, it's not gonna come out very well. So I really wanna reach out to business to business commercial contacts. And so we're gonna screen out for those. Now it's gonna output uh, this email right here. And then from here, we're gonna do a simple check just to make sure that the website actually exists before we use any scraping materials to understand what the company actually does. So in this case, we're gonna use an HTTP API request. We're gonna do what you call a head call. Now there's a number of different calls that you can do, which is normally gonna be a post request or a get request. Those are the two calls that are most common when we're doing pushing data and pulling data in. But in this case, we're gonna use a head request because all we wanna retrieve is actually the headers to ensure that that website actually exists because there's no reason to try to scrape a website if the website website doesn't exist. So this allows us to do just a simple check to see if we get what you call a 200 status code, which means we're good. And then from here, we're going to check. If we get a status code of anywhere greater than 200, but less than 399, that is a good sign. We can move forward. If you're getting like a 404 status code or anything else, it's just not good. There's no reason to move forward. Therefore, the workflow is not going to continue. That's what this if node does. It's either true or false. We're actually going to introduce a new scraping tool, which I love and it's called Firecrawl. Firecrawl is a way where you can simply scrape a website, but you can also apply AI to it in order to retrieve not just the raw data of the website, but you can actually retrieve Markdown, JSON. There's a number of different things, including AI agents within their platform in order to not just extract raw data, but actually interpret it into usable data. Firecrawl is definitely a usable one here that we've introduced into our workflow. And so what I'm doing here is I am extracting the URL and the reason I did that is because I wanted to make sure that it's actually a good email address versus the gmails, the examples.com and things like that. I want to make sure that it's not only a business email, but a business website. And if that exists, the chances are of the email being good and that the business actually existing is going to be a lot higher chance here. So from here, I am actually scraping their website, which you can see is parsing out very nicely. And so we have all of their information in Markdown and you will see towards the bottom, we have have everything that we need in terms of what they do and all the raw data from there. Now, what it is giving us is what you call stringified JSON. So what we need to do is parse out the JSON appropriately. And so I'm using what you call a code node to do some simple parsing of it in order to take this JSON that's all over the place and stringified and actually making it structured data, as you can see right here, and separating it out so that way I can actually use it. We're using a good old AI agent to do what we want to do because we don't want to send this manually. And so what I've done is I've prepared an AI agent to basically take the data from the website and then craft up a beautifully curated campaign email in order to actually reach out to these people. I always talk about three things that you want to have when you're prompting AI. You want to say the system message of the role that they are. What is their persona? What are they doing? It always defaults to you are a helpful AI agent. So a lot of times what you want to do is actually change that to what the AI is in terms of what the role is. Then you want to define the task and the parameters around that 
task. You want to identify and provide examples and constraints against what you don't want it to do and what you want it to do. This to me is going to be really, really good token control to make sure that your costs are always down so you don't get a large paragraph of data and you don't have your AI model hallucinate, which nobody wants. So notice that the AI agent, I put in a system prompt that says, you are a helpful AI agent that specializes in writing highly converting email copy. Your primary role is to analyze website data provided to you and craft a cold outreach email that offers sales automation systems, leveraging AI agents and data scraping to generate leads on autopilot. Your value proposition is to alleviate founders and sales teams from the burden of manual research and repetitive tasks like finding emails and prospect data just to send out a cold email. The guidelines, and you'll notice here, the guidelines are based on best practice that we follow, keeping it short, sweet, to the point, and value driven to make sure that we are leading with value, with no fluff. We want to make sure that the email that is being received is personalized, relevant, and ultimately value driven. We also provide the time. This is best practice. What I like to do in NA10 is just to provide the current time so that way it knows you can take action on specific things. And a lot of times it actually is pretty relevant when you want to do time stamped actions there. You'll see that. And then in the prompt message, the user message, we're simply providing the JSON markdown that's here, which is all the information uh, contained in the website. And then you will see in the actual output, it's outputting, I came across your website and noticed you provide expert roofing repairs, gutter services, and siding replacements. Just curious if you're using any AI agents or automations in your business to alleviate repetitive tasks. We recently helped another company streamline internal operations to save 324 hours and seven days and execute 11,000 automated tasks for a whole eight full timers, which is a true story. Would you be interested in learning how this works? So that's just a use case example. Obviously you'll want to craft up your value proposition and what works best for you, which all you need to do is just to change the system message here that is tailored to your business. So that way you can start pitching your value propositions to your prospects. From here, we're actually gonna do this next step here. As I prepared, we are gonna add them to instantly. We're defining the tool, which is to use this tool to add lead to instantly campaign. We're gonna do a post request. We're gonna do our credentials here to make sure we're all good there. And then the other beautiful thing about N8N is you no longer really have to define the parameters because a lot of times the AI, if you provide enough description and information around it, it's gonna be able to automatically detect it and provide the JSON that it needs to get a successful JSON call. So we have the website, which is the website URL. We have the email, which is the email address to send to. The company name, if it's provided, this is the company name. And then another thing we're gonna need to do is the campaign. And from here, we're going to go ahead and create a new campaign. So we're gonna go ahead and continue. And then you'll notice here, the campaign ID is right here. So we're gonna copy this. All right, and from here, we are going to add the campaign. Sometimes you just gotta work with the friction, make sure that you keep testing until you get a successful output. And we're gonna remove that. And we'll see, there we goes. So we have a successful call. All we gotta do is from here, we've generated some copy, and then we're gonna add lead to campaign. Now, one other thing that we wanna do too is make sure we add our fields. Here, we're gonna see if this actually works. There it is. All right, perfect. So the personalization has pushed through. So we just needed to remove the lead and then re-add them. So you can see right here, the copy is there. Then all we need to do is just go to sequences and we're gonna say quick question. That's the good one, right? This is a little shortcut I have. So good afternoon, good evening, good night, all the things. We're gonna remove first name since we don't have it here. Sometimes that's all you get. And then we're gonna go ahead and type in our variable which is personalization. And then we're gonna go account signature, which is right there. And then you'll see, if we hit preview, you have everything that you need right there in order to make sure that uh, we're good to go. Now, if you just need to get your API key in order to plug it into N8N, all you need to do is just click on the lower left here, you hit settings, and then you just simply go to integrations, hit API keys, and then all you need to do is hit create API key. You go ahead and name this N8N or whatever you need to do. Go ahead and define your scopes. We'll go ahead and select all and all and then you hit create API key, copy this, and you'll be off to the races. And then in order to add that into your API within N8N, you just hit this pencil right here and you just type in authorization and then type in your API key and then you should be good to go. One thing that you'll want to know with your credentials here is then you'll select generic credential type and then header authorization. So that way your credentials are all nice and kept secure uh, to make sure you're not exposing it anywhere it doesn't need to be. Now showing you how to write cold emails to do outreach to get clients is actually one thing, but to actually do it in real life, 
life, book sales calls, that's entirely something else. But what if I told you we actually use the leads just like the ones that I showed you in this video using instantly to send the emails in order to get them interested and then actually book real sales calls. Click here to check out the next video where we actually do that live in a challenge where we in just 10 hours start and sell a service-based business so you can actually see how we go about writing the email. We actually reach out to prospects live, show you everything you need to do to book multiple calls so that even if you're a beginner, maybe an intermediate, and you just want a little bit more business so you can use the exact lines in that video to get clients and grow your business. See you over there.